Hello everybody and welcome to the second ever podcast episode of Dad and Lad in Movie Land. I'm the lad and I'm here with my dad and uh, my dad's actually wanted to uh, start off by talking about what he's watched this week and um, I think he said the movie was called Maze. Dad, why don't you um, why don't you let us know what it's about? Right, so the synopsis for The Maze is, uh, this is IMDb, and you know, I'll, I'll put my comments in. Um, a Scotsman abruptly breaks off his engagement to Pretty Kitty, I'm supposed to know who she is, and moves to his uncle's castle in the Scottish Highlands. Kitty and her aunt follow Gerald a few weeks later and discover he has suddenly aged. Some mysterious things happen in a maze made from the hedges adjoining the castle. So I just think right there, that's a synopsis that's kind of weird <laughs> it sounds familiar it does sound familiar is it? I'm, I'm sure <laughs> who knows it could have even been this film but i've definitely heard or at least like the the use of hedge mazes in a in a film or tv environment where it's like oh it's such a mystery like it, it has like supernatural properties and stuff or i suppose another great <laughs> example of a crazy hedge maze is uh is in the shining you know but that's that's not the hedge maze yeah. being spiritual that's just the whole hotel kind of thing yeah, but it does it as a feature. It's, it's definitely a character if you want in that in that yeah, movie. It's a, isn't it? it's a key character. That's quite right. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, this this one. I mean, it appealed to me just on the synopsis because I think I was thinking, well, that's kind of it's just very very weird. It's a weird synopsis all around. Not just even just the maze piece. Mm. Piece. The whole thing is just a little kind of original and strange. So it's worth watching on that basis. And then and then the, the kind of style of the film is it starts. In an unusual way, with it in a kind of very dramatic, melodramatic fashion, we, we in something which doesn't almost seems like it's not even related to, well, not related to the synopsis, that's for sure, and and doesn't seem like it's going to be related relate in any way to the plot. And then it switches to a kind of a very light-hearted scene in like somewhere in the south of France or something like that, at some sort of party or, mm. I don't know if it's, or somewhere. And and then the, there's an unusual set of relationships between the dynamic between the characters because the we're introduced to the main character, the main protagonist and his girlfriend, and is uh, and, and I just for whatever reason I don't know why I keep I kept this is something that seems to obsess me lately with films is that is what the age of the girlfriend is and what the age even the age of the bloke you know whether they how young they were and they were talking about getting married and stuff like that and, and then the for some reason, she had a, a aunt with her on holiday, so that's not really explained. But I, I fell through, fell asleep through part of the film, so I didn't catch everything. But at this point, you know, you're introduced to the the, girl, the, the bloke and his girlfriend, mm. and his mate. Who I think at, at that point, his mate's there. There's four of them sat at a table. His mate's there, and he's kind of kind of chirpy, chappy with a few comedy lines. And then I don't think you ever see that guy in the film. He goes off to the bar. I don't think you ever see him in the film ever again. So I don't know what the the function of that character is. And then, and then the, uh, but the, yeah, I'd say the girl, the girlfriend, or the fiance, she, she has a, her aunt, so she's on holiday with her fiance and her aunt, and that's not, that's kind of weird. And then the, the, the story itself, the film, switches back to, um, it, as a narrator, it's narrated throughout, and every so often we go to the narrator, the narrator goes on camera, the new room, so that in itself, I think that again, it's an unusual feature, and the narrator mm. is the aunt. So I, I, I yeah, it's, it's kind of. It's it's quite jarring in a way, and maybe that's on purpose. I, I don't know. A bit confusing, especially interested me once I started watching it, and I saw some of the credits. Was it was directed by um, William Cameron Menzies, and I've only just recently been watching. I was watching a YouTube video about some of his work, um, mm. just by coincidence. This is before I watched this film, and it and it kind of made me even more interested in the fact that you know he was a very particularly good production designer who worked on uh, Invaders from Mars. Um, and that's one of the kind of best features of that of that kind of funky film. Um, that, that's a good. I mean, it's a, a film that I like. It shows, you know, it's, it's dated now. It's it's, a, it's of its time. But um, in my, you know, you know that my favorite one of my favorite genres is it's not just sci-fi, but my favorite subgenre probably is 50 sci-fi, very early sci-fi. And Invaders from Mars is what is of that, you know, section. So yeah, William yeah, yeah. Cameron mentioned was brought in to do the production work on that and, and uh, the production design work on that and, and they kind of gave it, gave it the atmosphere and the look and feel and the set designs and stuff like that and, and they really are kind of the nice, they're quite surreal, um, quite colourful and interesting um, and so that, that's one of the kind of one of the better aspects of that film of Invaders from Mars and so I thought, oh, William Cameron Menzies is, is known for doing really good production design 
And then the, the last thing that kind of really st stood out, made this film appeal, uh, was it says on, on the on the cover for the film, on the, on the what do you call it, the movie poster, it says uh, <laughs> it's got big, in big letters, three dimension. So we were thinking, oh, is it, is it going to be some sort of special gimmick on this? But uh, other than the letters, the characters in the in the in the in the film credits at the start having a bit of a shadow, <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of anything unless I missed it while I was sleeping. I can't think see any think of anything during that film that was actually particularly three dimensional. So that was an interesting quirk about it. But anyway, the maze, the deadliest trap in the world, according to the uh, the byline on the on the movie poster. <laughs> God, that's crazy. I mean, uh, so they, they really banked a whole lot on this maze. Did did anything else yep. really come about it? I mean, obviously, like, the fiancé aged an awful lot. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that was, yeah, but no, he aged a fair bit, and that and that was that was the, probably a bit more interested in and his, and his whole demeanour change, so from being, a, you know, about to get married and really cheerful and blah, 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 when they were on holiday with him, and they had to suddenly... He had, a, he had the news that his uncle had died. He had to rush home and take care of things at back of the castle, and 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 then they and then he just he changes, you know, they, he he just cut them off basically. He cut his his, his fiance off and everything. They didn't want to see them anymore, and it was going to be. And so they eventually go down and see what's going on, and and yeah, that's that part of it was was is quite interesting. They're, they're producing a bit of an interesting story there. I as I say, I, I personally. I fell asleep through parts of this film, so I don't. I didn't even see really what was going on in the maze. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even see anything dramatic about the maze. The only dramatic thing I saw <laughs> was was, it, was this change in the in the character of the of the of the fiance, the male, you know. So and and the and the reaction of the of the white, you know, understandable reaction of his of his girlfriend to it, which which you know, quite an interesting dynamic. But again, and it kept on striking me, you know. Why is her auntie going everywhere with her? She takes her auntie back with her. Auntie goes to you know. Her auntie's involved. Why, why don't you take a mum or a sister or something like? Why is it her auntie? <laughs> God, that is that is crazy. Yeah. That, yeah, it's such an interesting choice. I mean, especially if it's never really explained. Like, oh, you know, is it is it like oh, her parents are are dead and her aunt like raised her. So at least you know that that makes sense. But if there's if there's no kind of even little bit of backstory that tells you why she brought the aunt. That is just an interesting and random choice, especially if she's going to yeah. be the narrator as well. I mean, it's just like, well, the, she's clearly an important character, but she's not the main character. She's, she doesn't play a more vital role. It's just, that's so yeah, strange. I can't, I can't, I, unless I miss something, I still can't think for the life of me, why? Why is she, why is she even chosen as a narrator? I don't, I don't <laughs> well, she's not really relevant to the story in any way other than the fact that she's the aunt of the, of the girl. Right. right? Oh, I, I just honestly that baffles me. But, that is um, strange. Yeah, an interesting little film. Um, as what I watched this week. Another one I watched <clears throat> last night. We actually watched um, another film from the uh, I think the forties or fifties. We'll check it mm. out called Knock on Any Door. Bogart film, which I've never seen before. I'm always a fan of Bogart, so I want to see. We like to see any of his stuff. It's called Knock on Any Door. We watched it last night. Um, okay. Okay. 1949. It was made, 1949. Oh. Knocking uh, on any door. It's quite knock, knock on any door. It's called. It's knock kind of, on any door. Okay. Legal drama. <clears throat> he's, he plays it. He plays the boy. Yeah, it's, it's it was quite it's pretty good. It's pretty pretty decent film. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Worth, worth a look, definitely. I won't go into too much detail other than that. You know, he's basically he plays <laughs> a lawyer trying to get the young kids off a off a, a murder rap, and, and yeah, he tells there's a lot of the backstory of this kid's life and stuff like that, and the, the relationship between the lawyer and the kid. It's I think it's quite interesting, a bit different, quite original. I like an original film, and uh, and this was. I thought it was pretty good, pretty decent. And anything with bogey, I'm gonna I'm gonna like anyway. But so I'm a bit biased already. Yeah, so sorry. Right. Oh, we Nicholas all have Ray, our taste, don't we? Yeah, exactly. Nicholas Ray was the director of that, and he. I also know that he's made a few interesting, quirky kind of, somewhat dark numbers in the forties and fifties. He was a pretty decent director, worth you know, worth having a look at. He, he made it. Some interesting films, and then um, I, I can't really say that I watched this. I know we we watched this. We had this film on. You might have would have seen more of it than I did. It's called City of the Dead. That's another mm. kind of oh, like a, I want to say nineteen sixty. Check it. It's almost like a Hammer horror style thing. I don't think it was Hammer, um, but it was it kind of that sound kind of black and white kind of witchcraft and demons. 
type thing. And it and it that was quite interesting. It looked it started off quite interesting, and I fell asleep. So it must have been again. I think it was more because I was tired than it was boring. But it was it was quite interesting. Chris Lee played um, a very interesting role in that, and that's it's got right, a bit of drama okay. to it. So that's, that's a, yeah, it was an X-rated in, 19, in 1960. Yeah, it's quite quite an interesting one. X-rated in 1960. I mean, yep. that's that's quite a bold that's rating that. to give something. Yeah, I mean, it's it's clearly for that that point in time, it was considered to be a bit shocking and and not for children, and and maybe it's a bit tame by today's comparison, these days comparison for for that kind of a rating. It might not get mm. not if it would get an R rating these days, but maybe more of a PG film. But it but it was yeah, it was quite a little bit disturbing, I suppose. That's uh, understandable. A little bit, a little bit cliche, but it, yeah, it was it was it was worth a watch definitely. No, so it's still fascinating. It's still it's still fascinating take on the fact that you know, but like you said, it probably wouldn't be rated the same today. But you know, back in the nineteen sixties, it was just like, oh my god, this film is 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 way too much for you know a general audience or you know even an adult audience. Yeah. So they had to they had to give it you know the the harshest rating they possibly could. I mean, you really don't see X yeah. rating anymore. It's it's you know R is probably the the hardest you get, and even then yeah. it's like you know. They can slap it on almost any film, and it's like, ah, oh, it, might, it might not really feel like an R film. And then other, you know, PG thirteen films, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, I don't know if this was, if this, you know, I feel like it could have been considered an R rating, but you know, it's it's just yeah. interesting how the standards change over time. It is, it is, it is. So yeah, and then the the only thing that stands out in terms of films I watch this week, probably other than those, would be. Big Bug, which, you know, we put on the list. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, and which we watched. And uh, I enjoyed it tremendously. Um, it was definitely quirky, different. I enjoyed it because it was, again, it was original. I, I, I like an original film. I, I like sci-fi. Um, and, uh, and also, it's, you know, I'm kind of lazy. These days of an evening when I'm a bit tired and I didn't, I wasn't really in the mood for reading subtitles. So it was nice that Netflix dubbed it for us. <laughs> I don't know if you had a dubbed one. Okay, we watched um, we watched the sub with the uh, you know obviously the subtitles in the French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I uh, if if I'm gonna watch a film, I like to watch it in the original language, whether I understand it or not. That's just that's just the preference. Yeah. So that's that's how we watch it. Right. I, I I gotta say it was it was very entertaining. It was like like you said, it was yeah. it was quirky. It was I had no idea where the plot was going, which kept it so interesting. And you know it, yeah, the, the, that, the dynamic, agree, like yeah. the plot, continued to change so much over time. And at, after a point, you think you know what the plot is, and then it, it kind of just shifts. It changes away from that, and it becomes a subplot. And you're like, oh, okay, well now it's actually about this. Ah, maybe not so much about yeah. that anymore. Now it's about you know the, the 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 robots taking over and stuff. And it was it was so interesting how the story just continued to change in such a strange way, but all surrounded yeah. by the dynamic of all these people trapped in a futuristic home. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I, I like that. I like the fact. Well, I just like originality, and it's hard in film to get. Oh, absolutely. That kind of and the the temptation is to go formula and to have so many loads of cliches, and it, it wasn't filled with cliches. That was that's a good thing. There's lots of clever, clever, interesting stuff, and sometimes it was a little bit too clever. It went a little bit, you know, <laughs> it just went maybe a little bit over our heads in in places. But but on the whole, it was. You no, know, I thought it just kept it just kept it interesting. It was quite long, so it kept it interesting. It was. Um, it was kept long. You, it, it, it kept you focused on it throughout. It didn't get bored mm. at any point. Uh, they always kept you kind of. They always had plenty of drama going on to keep that thing rolling. Yeah. No, that's that's quite right. Um, yeah. So the uh, the best way to describe it is this little uh, sentence I found here. It's a um, it's a science fiction screwball comedy about artificial intelligence and authoritarianism. And where they overlap, and that's that's definitely a really good way to describe it because you've got, um, I mean, obviously you've got the what the original family in it. Oh, I can't remember their names; it's terrible because they have a there's so many characters in it that just get introduced and like yeah. popped in. And um, you've got yeah. the uh, you got obviously the the mum, the mum and her daughter who live together, yeah. and um, that's Alice she's... Barelli, IMDb. Alice, please. okay, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so she she's entertaining. Um, her guests, you know, a man and 
his son. The man, he Matt, um, he he, he claims your boyfriend. Yeah, the, the boyfriend. He claims to be like this, uh, yeah, oh, artistic poet. What, what what's what is it? It's like a magazine, Crystal Fusion, or something. He writes for, and you know, he's he's obviously yeah. there to to woo. Like that's that's their whole interaction, just one hundred percent wooing each other. It's just it's yeah. hilarious to watch, and you know, the kids have to like deal with it. Like, oh God, I can't believe I have to. You know, see seeing my mum and my dad like doing all this and that, it's just like ridiculous and it's funny. And uh, because it's like the year twenty forty five, I think it is, and uh, they've got like uh, they've got the the female robot android servant lady, uh, best way to describe her, I think. Um, you've got um, you've got like a smart Hoover robot. You've got uh, they've got the head in the wall robot Einstein, who's like you know incredibly intelligent. You've got the uh, basically Alexa who controls all the doors and all the uh you know the temperature control he, he does all the stuff it's it's a male but you know that doesn't really matter the fact is you know they have it just insane smart home technology like to the nth degree where you're like oh, okay this is what you know a future could look like for suburban people and everything and and then even they've got the the floating advertisement lady billboardy thing it just flies around to homes and it tries to interact with everybody in such a way but it's like can you imagine that's like the future of pop-up advertising right there the fact that you know she's coming over to sell you a product at your own home. I mean, that's just like the worst form of uh, of door-to-door -door salespeople. It's like they're just speaking to you through your windows and you can hear it. And they're specifically yeah. talking to you. They're using your name and they're like, this is something you're, you're interested in. It's like, can you can you imagine how annoying that would be? You're just like having a, you know, you're having lunch at home. You're looking outside. It's nice and sunny. You've got a bit of television on and just floating massive billboard lady just comes up to your window. So it's like, oh, I see you're enjoying, uh, you know, a bit, a bit of steak there. Oh, well, you should buy this uh, this extra extremely expensive and fancy Bernays sauce or something. It's just like he's trying to sell you something. You're like, are you are you for real? And just constantly, she's always coming around so many times in the film. And I thought that was so brilliant because I was like, I, I've never seen this done in any other kind of science fiction-y thing. Maybe, maybe Wall-E a little bit, but that's like, you know, the whole point is they're pushing products on people. They're making them lazy so the robots have complete yeah. control kind of thing. But you know, to see it in a live action environment in such a way, I'm like, it's this is this is really well done. And the fact, you know, she's constantly using people's names and really trying to sell them in it's it's just so, so funny. Yep, I agree. Totally. Totally. And I think that, you know, it's it's a take on I mean, obviously this is very futuristic and it's taking things to, to extremes, but it is a take on it is common it is commentary on the kind of things that happen today and, and the whole idea of right now that we have uh, marketing towards your, you know, personalised to your to your interests. And it's kind of some, it's kind of spooky how you, sometimes a TV station, YouTube, but also TV, seems to be able to know your demographic and, and be very, very personalised tagging stuff that, you know, it, you've seen you it's seen you search on or whatever, it's using your Google search data. And, and this is something which already people, are, you know, find a bit disturbing. Um, and, it, and I think in a way that's also commenting on that, it's, saying, you know, it's taking it to the the ultimate level of, of you know imagine you've got this you've got this really annoying advert box but it's it's outside your window and it's floating around it keeps coming up and every time you yep. kind of hear something a bit like uh, a bit like i'm gonna say it and she's gonna she's gonna wake up now alexa right it's a bit like when you say something to, to alexa and then she listens to you or she hears you you know hears you rambling and she comes up she does a keyword search and finds something yep. slightly relevant to what exactly. you're talking it is exactly you don't, you like don't that want it. you don't want it but she's gonna force it down here yeah, and that's it's some sort of a commentary on that. So, but uh, yeah, I think I think that's a really cool thing. And actually, all of it, the whole thing has there's lots and lots to unpick in that in that film, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the, the, I found the the I can't remember what they call the the, the robot overlords, if you will. Um, oh, the uh, the Yonics. Yeah, they were extremely. I mean, very well cast. He was that that guy playing main the main. Yeah. The main uh, character is very menacing, very menacing, and and you know, you honestly, can can it really, um, you know, there's not 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 in any Francois way. Francois kind of, Leventhal uh, played every single one of them. I mean, it's just just fantastic. Yeah, yeah, such a creepy it, face. Yep, yep, yeah, 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 and perfectly played, perfectly played. I mean, the whole cast did did a great job. I gotta say, honestly, um, yeah, fantastic job. Yeah, yeah, it's a great film, and so and so. I'm just looking at a couple of others of. Uh, the journey apart from Delicatessen, which I think we should try and tackle again. I need to yeah. rewatch it and maybe you get find it, help you find it so you can have a look at it. Yeah, but, yeah, um, we'll try that this also, week. 
I noticed that, that uh, Jean Paul Genet also did Amelie, which is uh, which I remember being a great movie. I can't remember exactly the full details of what it was because I watched it many years ago, probably around the sort of, same sort of time I watched Delicatessen. But I remember what enjoying that. That was extremely funny, kind of quirky film. Amelie, and um, probably his best known film. And then Mick Max. I've, I've heard of Mick Max, and, and it looks interesting. But I've never watched it. Another kind of quite a big uh, box office success for, for this great French director. So uh, that's something that I'd like to have a look at as well at some point. Mick Max. Okay, well, we, we can we can type all these things down in our uh, ideas and feedback. That way, we can keep track of our list of you know things we want to talk about, what we want to do next. That's perfect. Yep. Yeah. No. No, no, I haven't. But that also looks quite interesting. That's got Ron Perlman in it. Um, okay. Okay. I think Ron Perlman's in more than he's been in more than one of the Jean Pierre Jeunet. In fact, wasn't he? I think he was in the Alien one. So he's, oh, he's and, um, one of those kind of like, Alien Resurrection. Yeah, it's, it's been that, a long uh, time uh, since uh, I've seen that. Uh, he might have been. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I, I mean, he's he's surprisingly he in a lot of things as Ron Perlman. He just. He just pops up out of nowhere. Even if you don't know he's about to be in something, he'll just he'll just appear. Because I didn't know he was in the uh, in the the Don't Look Up thing. But then again, I didn't know that half the cast was in that film. You know, I, I knew it was uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, it was Jennifer Lawrence, and that was that was basically it. That's all I knew. Just ba I suppose you know their advertising is mostly Netflix based, so you know it's different to see. They, they squeeze they squeeze the cast in that film. They squeeze a massive cast in that film. They really did. It was very very surprising. Honestly, I mean. Definitely, definitely a different film to watch. So okay, so that's that one. Um, what have you been watching this week? Uh, there was, um, obviously besides finishing Big Bug because because uh, we watched it in two parts because like like you said it's it's a long film. I think it's it's like closing in on three hours. It's like two and a half or something. It's it's quite a, quite a lengthy film, so we had to watch that in two parts. But we um. Oh god, it's gonna it's gonna escape me now. But you you oh no no it's um I think maybe you've even seen it. This is a, a 2010 film starring um, Ben yeah. Affleck. It's got Jeremy Renner. Surprisingly, I had no idea for for a little while it was him. It's um the town. Yep. Yeah, and it was yep. um it was quite a good film actually. Like when when I really think about it, like it was because it's um I mean you know call them gangsters. They're they're uh, they're professional criminals, really, is what they are in this uh, in this area of. I don't want to say it's Boston. I, I can't believe I'm misremembering some stuff already, but but basically in that kind of area, you know, north northeast America, and um, yeah, it's like one specific area where you know their crime rate is quite a big deal, and it's like everybody there essentially has done a level of crime, typically some kind of like a you know money making crime of like bank heist and stuff. And it, it portrays mostly around Ben Affleck and his crew, and um, how they've how they've hit like they've hit maybe like a few banks, quite a few trucks and stuff. He does explain how many things they've hit in the film at one point, but um, but it's just such a such an interesting thing because it's um kind of shows his life and how you know his dynamic is with everybody. And it's like oh, okay, so you know you can tell they're a bit rough around the edges, but they they mean well. But they're still you know they're still criminals. They're still going to do what they need to do at the end of the day to to make ends meet and get by. But because so many people in that town, city area, are the same. They all get on, they all understand. The police are obviously like, oh, this is, you know, fucking frustrating to have to deal with all the time. But, you know, they can't really track too many people down because it's like, well, we don't have evidence on these people for this crime, even though we know they have they have committed crimes before of that nature. So it makes it hard for them to, you know, ah, it's a whole thing. Oh, so uh, John Hamm is the, um, the main police investigator who's even trying to get them down. It's, it's, it's quite a good little casting. Right. But um, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think how else to describe it. So, um, so they they rob a bank, and you know they cause yeah. a little bit of trauma to some people. You know, it's it's, it's going to be terrifying. You're held at gunpoint, and people are making you do things and stuff, and or you know, possibly going to kill you and take your money and everything. It's 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 traumatizing. I totally get that. And uh, the bank manager lady, um, they they believe because she saw one of the tattoos on one of the back of the necks because they're all wearing masks and stuff, and it's like, oh, that's a way to identify a person. So uh, 
the whole crew's like, ah, oh, shit, you know, she, she knows a little bit about us. She might be able to figure out who we were and uh, track us down with the police and stuff. And, um, and so Ben Affleck and his crew are like, oh, we, you know, we, we need to take care of this. And Ben's like, all right, well, I'll, I'll track her down. I'll, I'll sort this out and stuff. And, uh, and he catches her at laundromat. And basically they, they start this, uh, he, you know, he starts kind of, you know, being like, oh, actually, you know, I, I, I kind of like her. And they start hanging out because, you know, she's been traumatized by the whole event and stuff. And, you know, she's confiding in him and he's like, oh, you know, I, she, she actually, she's a really nice person. And now we're like hanging out. And before you know it, they start like, you know, they, they start going out and like, it's just crazy that like, you know, this person that he robbed, that he traumatized, and now he's dating that person and she has no idea. So that whole, that whole dynamic is just so crazy. Cause obviously, weird. you know, it's, it is, it is so weird. And his crew is, is always just like, oh, you know, have you, um, have you taken care of the, the, the lady? Have you, you got rid of her and stuff? And, and he's like, ah, oh, don't, don't worry about it. It's, 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 it's a non-issue. And, um, at one point he and her are having lunch out in public as you do. And, um, she goes off to the toilet. Jeremy Renner pulls up. And he just sits at the table talking to Ben, you know, because that's just what friends do sometimes. Everything and Ben, Ben's like, oh shit, you know, you, yeah, you just trying to make small talk, but he's like, oh, you should, you should, you should get out of here, you know. I was, I was just about to leave and stuff, and trying to get him out of there before he realizes, oh yeah. shit, you're having lunch with the lady with the, who could with get you. us all arrested. And so you know, he he plays it off really well, and he does, you know, and eventually he you know makes his leave and everything, but he's going to confront him about it because like, well, why wouldn't you, you know, he's like, shit, this lady can get us all arrested. She can literally bring all of us down. There's like, it's, this yeah. has got to end kind of thing. It's, it's like, dude, if you, if you, oh, just absolutely crazy story. And then, um, at the end of it, they keep getting like more and more intertwined with all the, uh, all the criminal activity and stuff. And then, you know, Ben's eventually like, oh, look, I want to, I want to start a new life. I want to leave with her. I want to, you know, correct my ways and be a better person as you know there's always the redemption underdog kind of story which is good and um all the 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 people he works through like a florist basically who like cleans the money and like does all the stuff and gets in the job and it's like look you work for me basically and he's like no look fuck all that i, I want to get out of this i'm not doing any more jobs like, look, you're, you're gonna fucking do this job or we're gonna bring everything down on you like you you will not escape there is nothing you can do and it's like, we're going to hurt yeah. you, girl. We're going to hurt you. We're going to hurt everybody you care about. You know, we're going to ruin you kind of stuff. And it's like, oh, shit. Okay. So he does the one more job for him. And uh, it's it's quite an intense job. I think they're robbing, um, they're robbing like literally the like a baseball stadium or something. Like they're doing some pretty hardcore stuff. And uh, yeah. like all the, all the police are aware of what's going on. They know there's going to be a big hit at this place. So they're like super, super trying to crack down on this. And they, they, they're quite, quite aware who the people were involved in the original bank heist. So that's why they're also there. And it's just, it's just like these crazy cool gunfights and everything. You've got proper showdowns and, and then the endings kind of, kind of lackluster, if I'm honest. Right. But I, I, I won't spoil that in case anybody's interested and want to see the film. It is a good film and I did enjoy it. Well, that's interesting. That sounds like it's got its little twist in there and it's a little uh, dramatic build up. It does. I mean, Jeremy Renner, for being the not super tall and intimidating guy in that film, like you really feel like he will mess somebody up. You, he, he plays a really good role. Ben Affleck, not so much, but that's just you know, that's just Ben. He's just he's just doing the part. Yeah, yeah. He's a little bit, you know, the thing with Ben Affleck, he comes across he's a little bit wooden in his acting. To be honest, mm. but I, you know, I don't. He's probably, I'm probably not being fair to him, but I've always found. And I like him, and he, he plays some good parts. He's, he's in some good films, but he's, yeah, he's yeah. Just, I don't know. And and the, the odd thing is, I I find Casey Affleck to be extremely. He comes across as being not not very fantastically expressive, and but I, yet I find him to have great salty. I, I think he's a fantastic actor. Yeah, uh, yeah. I enjoy watching Casey Affleck, his brother by comparison. Um, quite different, quite different altogether. But I, I'm looking at the the cast of this film, The Town. And he, he has got a good cast, and even down in the lower end, you know, the kind of the bottom, the names that aren't big in the in the listings here. There's a couple of guys that I think are superb actors, like Pete Bosselthwaite and Chris Cooper. I mean, Chris Cooper is one of my favourite actors. He's such a brilliant actor, mm. and, and I guess he's got a, pre, a fairly small role in this film, but um, just just superb actor. He's, he's done so much, so much great stuff since I saw him first time. I saw him, and an amazing performance. I knew that I wanted to watch 
more of this stuff was when he was in American Beauty and he played the. Uh, I don't know if you if you watched American Beauty, maybe um, with the with the Kevin Kevin Spacey and um, and Annette Benning, where they play okay. a couple a, a suburb they kind of bored. And directed by English director, he's an American film, but directed by Sam Mendes, which I think was the first film that he directed in the States. Okay, um, okay. And he's, again, he's, he's a good, he's a really good director and a director. I like to watch his stuff whenever he does anything, Sam Mendes. But well, he, I haven't um, seen American he, Beauty. Do, do you know, the, um, do you know the, the rough synopsis of it? Yeah, of course. It was, it was about the suburban couple. Who were kind of, their relationships become very tired, and he got really frustrated with his job. He's, he's kind of middle-aged. And uh, and he just he basically he gets he's getting laid off, and so he he, he um, decides to just have a, he has a kind of a life change, and he just decides to start flipping burgers, and he start, and he falls for his 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 daughter, who his daughter hates him, or at least he feels like she hates him, and she acts like she hates him, but her best friend is uh, is really some really young, hot teenager that is the father falls for, so it's a little bit you know he's a little bit quirky in in the <laughs> a little bit pervy in that sense. Right, and then the neighbor, the girlfriend goes out with the na- the the lad of the, from the neighbor who's also kind of a bit bit weird. It comes across as he's got a bit of a name, being a little bit weird. But he's a dealer, makes lots of money from that. And his father is ex-military, t- massively homophobic, and and to the point that you know n- nobody in the film that uh, is is hom- homosexual, but he's convinced that everybody's from his son to his neighbor that they're all homosexual in it. And he's like, ah, uh, uh, yeah, and I think I get it, you. It, it, turns, it turns out. It turns out he wants himself to be, you know, he himself he probably feels deep down he's, he's homosexual and he's trying to, he's had to suppress it all his life, his ex-military and all this kind of stuff, he's had to be this really tough guy. And that that character is played to perfection by Chris Cooper. And that, that's the first uh-huh. time, you know, I've ever seen him. And I thought, I must see more of his work. He's, he's He just played it with such an intensity. It was, it was just fantastic. I mean, it was a great character to play anyway, but he just played it so well. Right. And then after that, he had a bit of a spell. And he, he he was in quite a he got a lead roles in a couple of kind of big name films like Sea Biscuit. If you heard of that, which is about the racehorse, yeah, 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 race yeah. Horse. And there's a couple of other films as well where he, when he uh, at the time, the early two thousands, when he and he really kind of got off a couple of lead roles or very high star roles. He's still he's still in various films, but you know, and, and playing different types at different levels, high in the cast or low in the cast. And this one is clearly he, play, he probably plays a fairly small part. It's a bit like Gary Oldman when he plays, you know, Gary Oldman being such a fantastic actor who could carry a film on his own strength, you know, the likes of Coppola's couple, Dracula, right? But but mm, at the same time, I mean, he, he'll, he'll star in things like the, the Dark Knight and he'll, he'll play a fairly, you know, Commissioner Gordon, quite quite low down the cast, really. And and but he'll he'll take those roles as well. And I think Chris Cooper is similar for that. You know, he can kind of he'll take, he doesn't mind he'll take something, whatever. And Pete Bossles Bossles way English actor. Um, just as he's dead now, but he, he just a very curious, interesting actor and brilliant, brilliantly entertaining. It was a TV star as well, and he, mm. I think, most famously played the part of for anybody that's watched The Usual Suspects, which is I don't know, have you watched that? I've definitely heard of it. I, I don't know if I've seen it. Yeah, well, put it on your list. It's definitely one of the, the all-time best movies ever made. It's definitely worth a watch. Uh, the usual suspects, but but again, Kevin Spacey is in that as well. He plays the main protagonist, um, but um, but Pete Bossel the way plays a part of this. Uh, the basic, usual suspects is basically about a, a bunch of guys who are always getting whenever there's been some sort of crime. They're all they're all small time criminals. And whenever any any kind of crime goes down, the co- the cops are always round them up. And, and and it's a reference actually to Casablanca. So in, in Casablanca, um, <laughs> there's. A, there's, a, there's a, a crime occurs, and the local chief of police is heard to say, uh, "Rick's place, Rick's cafe, which is the main venue of Casablanca, is heard to say, oh, uh, you know, round up.' Tells his tells his uh, subordinates, the other, the cops. He says the constable. He says, round or the John Dam, should I say? He says, round up, round up the usual suspects. Go on, you know, basically, <laughs> you know, the, a crime's occurred. Let's get, let's yeah. get the usual gang of rich bastards yeah, that, that we always harass. We'll bring them in, and we'll, you know." And that's and the usual suspect is a reference to that. And this is a bunch of small time criminals who have actually worked together as a gang from time to time in in various different. And, and as the story unfolds, it's it's from the point of view of one of them who's kind of been in, who's been kind of grilled by the police about a particular crime that they try to pin on him and his and his buddies. And he's he's explaining this mysterious gangster that, that you know he's telling this old backstory of a whole ch- this chain of events that occurred in the background that he's all right and it's really interesting anyway anyway the guys that are the criminals they they get um 
they 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 put through they put onto this project this 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 some sort of job, but they by some mysterious gang lord or whatever uh, from from abroad or whatever, and and the only link they don't know who this guy is that's organising it all. And they're getting increasingly frustrated because they're getting messed about a bit and getting pulled in pulled and pushed into different things. And mm. the, and the link guy, the guy that's the kind of main contact, they kept, they never get to see the the main gangster right but the, the main gang lord who's organizing the whole heist but the the link guy is is this uh indian guy who's uh who's really kind of you know very kind of charming and, and very kind of proper and stuff like that and that's paid by <laughs> he's played by pete possel oh, okay, that, that's okay. a, you know it's a, a, it's a long explanation of as to who pete possel is he's been in lots more than that he's a very interesting very interesting and brilliant english actor so that's but, a good way to describe somebody <laughs> But uh, they, he's in the town as well, so he, you know it's, it's quite common for him to have played kind of small parts and, in movies and stuff like that. You, you'll see, you'll recognize. He's got one of those faces that you can recognize straight away. Right. Actually, I think one of his, I want to say he was in because he's like a northern English actor. He was in something. I think he was in um, what do you call it? The Full Monty. That's the ah, kind of film. That he, yeah, he was, in. He was either you. in that or he, or he was or he's in the one that followed up, which was a bit less well known, brass stuff. But he would have been in those kind of. Quite a lot of those. It'd have been one of the kind of one of the troop, one of the entourage that was in right, that. Right, right. In the ensemble, not not entourage. One of the ensemble that was in that. Okay, okay. I'm with you. So, so yeah, we went off on a tangent there, didn't we? Well, that's <laughs> that's the beauty of it. We're allowed to, you know. This is this is what we're doing. Absolutely. It's it's Absolutely. it's our show. It's our format. We can do with it as we please. I mean, there's there is no expectations we can say whatever we want describe it have we just it's just fun we can take it anywhere we want that's exactly anywhere right. we want and uh you know so whether we, people choose to listen or not that's up to them so in the, in the, in the same month as the town was released yeah. in um theaters in the states september um 2010 september 17th, 2010 in All that right. very same month, you want to, here's a list of some of the other films that were released at the same month. See if you okay. can recognize any of them. Yeah. Right. Devil. Devil. Remember yep. that one? When yeah. And that was listed. Yeah. Uh, that was a sort of demonic thing. And it was, yeah, it wasn't yeah. At all. It was about the, the demonic in an elevator, <laughs> wasn't it? A bunch of people trapped in an elevator. Thinking, yeah, <laughs> that's right. That was that was quite good. I, I enjoyed it. Um, it was. It was. It yeah. Was. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think it was. I think it was quite good. How they they all have like a, a somewhat darkish backstory, and that's what connects them all. And it's like, oh, he's he's here for one of us, kind of a thing. That was that was quite good. That yeah. was quite. And then obviously, you know, the, there's the the people on the outside through security monitors and stuff. They're trying to help get them out and everything, and they can see certain things that are happening. Yeah, that was that was that was quite interesting. It was. It was. I I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It just wasn't what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Absolutely, definitely not what I expected. Especially because you know, so, literally the whole film is is just in the lift. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> cost effective. <laughs> so uh, another one I didn't actually I never saw this film, but uh, Leaves of Grass was out was released this month. The American with George Clooney. I've, I've never seen that film. The American, really okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I've, I've heard of it. Don't know if I've seen it. I've, yeah. I've seen the show The Americans, but that's that's very different. No, and then Wall Street Money Never Sleeps, which is a follow up to Wall Street with um, what's his name, Douglas Michael Douglas. And I, th I didn't think mm. I watched that sequel a while after. I didn't think it was that great, to be honest. I'm yeah. still here. Here's a curious old film. I'm still here with Joaquin Phoenix. Have you ever seen that? I, that I think so. I think I did see that. It was um. It was the it was the it was the tracking him when he when he seemed to go off. And I remember, it, because we were in the States when this happened, when he actually said, oh, he announced publicly, I'm giving up acting. And he, yeah. did, he went out of the scene completely. But what, what we didn't realise was it was all a hoax for the, for this, for the, you know, and meant to be the vehicle for this particular movie. That's right. Which was a documentary for in, in his life, which, uh, which yeah, well, that was a curious little number. And when he it's went on clever. to try and be a, a rapper. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I, I remember yeah. some of that. Oh man, but, oh, but it was all fake. It was yep. all fake. And then, and then uh, Ryan Reynolds starred in the film, which I've never watched. I had it on my list of what, films to watch: Buried and 
Emma oh. Stone when he's buried alive or something like that, and then Emma Stone in Easy A. Um, oh yeah, which yep. looked like a pretty cool film. I've never again never watched it. I probably it's, um, would enjoy that because I do. Watch yeah, it. it's it, it is quite good. I think it was definitely one of Emma Stone's best performances, and it was probably one of the ones that really elevated her career to the the status where everybody everybody knows her name. It was it was a good film. Well, it's worth watching the next. Yeah, yeah, um, keep, yeah. I'll keep it on the list. And then Catfish, a film which I actually had on my wish list for a very long time, and I only watched it for the first time earlier this year. And I, I knew what it was about because the whole series sprung out of it, hadn't it? An MTV series sprung out about Catfish. Oh, uh, yeah. When, oh, I didn't know there was a yeah, film. Where people, yeah, yeah, it, start, it started with the film. The film is what started the whole thing. Oh, so, is, it, um, is it the same um, guys who it, run the show, though? It may well be. I was asking myself no. that same question, but I never watched... I think I watched the show once many years ago, briefly. Okay. And, but I okay. think if I looked at I looked at trailers, I think it is the same guys. Is it, and, yeah, because uh, it's just the I two guys it, who basically do it. Yeah, well, in the film, it, they've got you know they've got some character to them. So I imagine I think it will be the same guys. Um, no. it, but I yeah, that, that I had it on my list for a long time, and I, and you know I wanted to watch it way back when it first came out, or certainly a year or two after that. But I just kind of parked it, especially when I saw it was an TV series. I thought, oh, it's probably going to be, be a bit goofy. But I watched it earlier this year, and I must say, I, I did enjoy it. Uh, yeah. I it was a thoroughly good, thoroughly good. I know, oh, obviously, I now it's no not that. they had a film. Oh, I'll have to watch that. It's not, it's not that. Nowadays, it's not that original of an idea, but actually, at the time, it was quite original to, to make that kind of a documentary to entrap somebody that was trying to was, had a fake ID on social media. And, and, and they did a really great. And and I, I want to say sens sensitive. I want to say is that the word sensitive? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Job of it. They they were quite. Um, what's the word? I want to say. God, my brain's going completely. My brain's going. <laughs> uh, they did uh, sympathetic. Uh, they were very sympathetic to the to the to the, the person being catfished. Yeah. Oh, to the perpetrator. Okay. Yeah, okay. The, the person. No, the person actually behind it. The person who was actually faking. Once oh. they actually tra trace that person, track that person down, they were actually quite sympathetic to their to their situation, their reasons for doing what they did. Yeah, yeah it's worth watching. Because yeah, usually yeah. in the show, at least more recently in the show, they tend to not be so nice to the people who who perpetrate, who do the the catfishing. But that's that's fair yeah. enough because it's like it's like look, whatever your reasoning is, you have still deliberately lied to these people in such a way that it's you know it's 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 disgusting. It's not okay what what you've done. You know, to, to lead yeah. these people on in such a fake way is is crazy. But no, it's just, I, I had no idea that there was a there was a film, you know, that caused the television series. Because huh? I, I quite enjoyed the television yeah. series. I've seen a few. I wouldn't say I've seen full episodes. I, I don't think I'm that much of a fan. But I've seen like highlights, usually the big reveals and stuff. Because those are always quite good. That's that's what you want to see. You want to see the reveals. You don't need all yeah. the fluff. You don't yeah. need all that. You just want to see. Yeah, the, exactly. yeah. You don't have to drag it out. You don't have to drag it out. No, exactly, but I'm I'm sure a film it it probably be that there'd probably be a lot more interesting parts to it. You know, you could tell it's a lot more fleshed out, which could be quite good. It might be a little too much fluff, but I'll, I'll probably still give it a go just because I, I do like it's you know it's 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 it's, it's like you said it's, it's an interesting idea for a documentary, and uh, you know speaking of documentaries, I think the fact that Netflix. Netflix has really mastered making a documentary entertaining in this day and age. Because, yep. yep. I mean, yeah, now yeah. they have so many documentaries. And, like, back in the day, I wouldn't have really cared too much about watching a documentary unless it was like, oh, okay, it's something I'm interested in already and I want to learn more about it. But now it's like they can hit you with, oh, look at this crazy, crazy story that you're never going to believe. It's a, it's a documentary. But you watch it and you're like, well, this is such an interesting documentary. The way it's shot, the way it's produced, like it feels it feels like it's an evolving story, and it's usually something you just don't believe. You're like, this, this is crazy that this happened. And, you know, you've got all these character accounts, yeah. but it, it, it's a documentary, and yet it's so entertaining to watch. Netflix has really got it down. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, yeah, there's so many. I've seen so many interesting, and we're always on the lookout minimum for the latest. Oh new god, absolutely, documentary. absolutely. They have so so many good ones. Because yeah, yeah, even even when we went to uh, visit you up north, and we were talking about um, uh, what was it? The one about the Bhagwan 
who came over to uh, to yeah. America and started his uh, yeah, wild, commune wild, over wild there. Wild country. Yeah, I mean that was that was crazy. And then they even had uh, the follow up documentary with um with um oh, Sheila, I think her name was. Sheila, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what um, and that's what they called it, isn't it, Sheila. Yeah, which I I didn't think that was very strong. That was not. It's 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 just a follow up no. story, which it's, is fair it's, enough. It's, it's, yeah, it was a week. It was, if you're curious as to what, what happened with her, then, you know, it answered that question. Yeah, but beyond but, that, it was, it was a little bit weak. Yeah. Although, I mean, like, like I said, Wild Wild Country, fantastic. I mean, the, the story, everything that happens, and, and it's it's in like it's in like a less than 10-year time span of all that mad stuff yeah. that happens. It is such a cool story. I mean... Yeah. I mean, they almost bought a whole bloody town. They were trying to make a city and everything. It was insane what they were doing. Yeah, poisoning people. Oh God, such a such a crazy thing. Absolutely worth a watch. Uh, what other well, what other yeah, good document? Along the lines the lines of that one, there's the one with the uh, the guy the German. I can't remember what it was called though. The guy the German guy that went to Argentina, and and where he was uh, where he created a camp, um, and he was basically running, you know, people's lives, young people's lives at that camp. But he also got involved with the government, helping them. You know, people go missing that were against the government. You know, helping let oh, them get okay. rid of left wingers and. Okay. Them and like that that's equally equally uh i thought interesting and and somewhat disturbing uh and yeah. i'm sure i don't remember what it's called though i have to i have to think about that i have to try and find it um and so i'll look at it I'll, I'll try and find yeah, it yeah yeah i definitely found the name for yeah. that because i'll i'll i'd like it i like a good documentary these days it's crazy to think i'm saying those words i like a documentary these days i, I never thought i would ever say i like a documentary but ne like I said, Netflix is just really—they've mastered how to how to bring such to make to make it entertaining to watch, and they, they do a very good job. Like even uh, they, they have so many murder criminal ones, or you know, like uh, kidnapping cases, or, or Madeline McCann, for an example. They just you know they could take any story and they can really make it interesting. Even like uh, like supernatural, paranormal. They've got like the Bob Lazar story. I mean, I I really find that fascinating and stuff. Obviously, because you got that the whole. He's worked at a government facility, aliens, and everything like that. Uh, but go going back on um, on the the original documentaries, another good one that I really liked was um, was Son of Sam. I think it's actually called Son of yeah. Sam's or so or Sons yeah. of Sam, Sons of or Sam, because of Sam, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 because 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 uh, me and Fran we used to watch Mind Hunter on Netflix, which is really really good. I mean, I really hope they continue it because it is just. It's a fantastic thing of like of the the beginning of the FBI's um, I think criminal psychology unit is whatever they call it, and um, yeah. you you really get to see it evolve where they where they actually first get to start interrogating you know serial killers in prisons and stuff because it was unheard of before yeah. then and and you know they started being like look we need to start creating profiles we need to really start understanding how these killers work you know and uh, see if we can start linking things together and create you know. Uh, uh, there's like a certain word for it, I completely forget, but you know, based on those uh, those profiles, I think is probably the best way to describe it. They can figure out whether you know how somebody else is acting, whether it's similar to something they've seen before, and it's so interesting because they they um they they interrogate like Ed Kemper, they interrogate the son of Sam, they interrogate like all kinds of people. Obviously, not the real people. It's like you know the even Charles Manson and stuff, and it's just it's just so fascinating to see these actors play these different serial killers and try to portray them to the best of their ability. They pick some really good ones. I mean, it makes it so yeah. so good to watch, and it's it's not a documentary, is Mindhunter. It's just it's just like a crazy, oh, uh, it's it's just a crazy story. But it is so interesting to watch. But which obviously, like well, you no. see these, you see these other killers like pop up now on Netflix. Obviously, like I said, Sons of Sam because the son of Sam was in Mindhunter, which is why I bring it. I think they've got Ed Kemper. I think they've got his story on Netflix now, which is good because I want to see that. But the Sons of Sam one. I mean, I, I thought it was just the one guy who was like, ooh, he's hearing all these voices through his dog and it's like a demon or something and it's causing him to kill people. That's what they portray as yeah. a mind hunter. But in Mind Hunter, he's like, look, it's all bullshit. You know, I just came up with that stuff so I could I could do this and everything. And I, I, I could kill people. It was all bullshit so I could have a, a, an easier sentencing. And that's so interesting. And then yeah. you watch the actual documentary and it's like, well, look, he didn't even act alone. There's so much more to this story. It's like, oh, hang on a minute. This is... There's so much more to the story than even like a television show. New, it's like it's it's so interesting, so very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm trying to find um, that particular film like that. 
Yeah, there's still, there are so many, as you said, and some of these are still, I'm surprised I still haven't seen some of the, the ones on the list, which look actually look pretty decent now. I'm looking through, look like worth the worth a definitely worth a look. But I cannot find that one. That, that, you, I think you'd find that interesting. I think you'd like it because I'm sure I would. It, in in the sense it was very similar to to Wild. The story is somewhat similar to Wild Wild Country because it's kind of a cult thing. Yeah. So so it's about I do go who go off to another country and so that just so the guy exploits that's really everything and more, yeah yeah. Yeah, he's got even more control and, and gets he just goes, you know, more and more you know, just gets more and more crazy as more and more powerful he gets. And uh I Sounds like a cult. I can't remember what it was called. But I'll track it down for before the next one. No, ah, perfect. For our next special huh, it... podcast. So and there's another film we watched this week. I've just remembered that. And I can describe it to you, but I can't remember. We can take this as a puzzle if you want, in case you've, uh, in case you have watched it yourself. I can describe the film to you, but I couldn't tell you what it was called off the top of my head. And what happens is a, a woman um, yeah. has to go and clear out a house where her, her uncle was living. I think it's in. I want to say it's in California. Uh, her uncle had been living. He died suddenly of a heart attack, and so he's got a house, and he's left. Actually, he's left it the house to her, and he's, she's got to go and um so we started off with a with a, a weird relationship between auntie uh, a, a girl and her auntie in the film in the maze and now we've got a weird relationship between a girl and her uncle in this film which i can't remember the name of at the minute um and so she goes to clear this house out and uh, she starts to get have weird experiences like you know it seems like it's haunted lots of little funny things happen curious things happen that make it look like it's got a ghost or or somebody Maybe somebody's living in the house or something like that, and I won't give too much away. But yeah, and it, and it kind of gradually the story unravels, and it's it, it's interesting. It gets more and more dark and more and more kind of spooky. And uh, yeah, but I can't remember what it's called. And eventually, you find out obviously what what it's all about. But I can't really tell you much more than that without telling you without spoiling it. So I can't remember for the life of me. I can't remember what that film's called. We watched it this week, I think. Did you lose you there? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what happened, but um, it wasn't picking up my mic anymore. I, it, it's probably picked it up on my side, but it wouldn't show it in the Discord, so I don't know if you heard what I was saying as well. But that, that's, that's fine. That's not a problem. Uh, we we were... I, I caught everything you said, so that's fine. That's all That's all on the recording. We didn't recognize the film. No. Not one that you've seen. No, but then again, I mean, do, do you know the like actors in the film or? No, there's nobody, nobody famous, nobody that I, I that I would recognise. Okay, it was, it, okay. It, was kind of, it was almost like a small indie film. That could be. It might, it might not have been on Netflix. It might have just spotted somewhere else. No, it's, it's quite uh, possible. That's the thing about movies, especially you know, considering we're in the year 2022 now. And that, like I said, there's like films coming out every single day, even not just in one country. Yeah. Like you're talking all over the world, so it's like there's so there's there's so many now. It's it's yeah. so easy to you know mix any of them up, or to even just be like, oh, I saw this film, and then you might describe it, and it's like, oh, it sounds like this film, and it's like, oh, they're very similar films, but they're not the same film. They're not what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, there are there are so many films that are actually similar or sort of a similar story, but they're like a slightly different, just yeah. slightly different twist on it. Yeah, we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to start having some like themed episodes where we um, deliberately, you know, pick like I don't know, uh, a film that's like incredibly obscure, maybe has like a like a zero percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes or something. You know, like we have to have like specific things that we're gonna do. Because obviously we could talk about the popular ones, the ones we know all the time, but I, I think it's good to change it up every once in a while. And I think to pick something, you know, that maybe like nobody's seen or, you know, like almost nobody's seen. There's, there's many yeah. different, because there's so many films, there's so many different ways we can find. Or even it's like, oh, okay, this film uh, we, we picked because it has, um, it has like uh, nobody in it that we recognize or, you know, oh, this one is a totally foreign film. You know, that's, that's, that's the beauty of it. We can just pick, we can pick themes and just uh, decide that's what we're going to do this week. Yeah, yeah, good idea. 
Yeah, Very good idea. Change it up every once in a while. It's not a bad idea. Or uh, obviously, like like in uh, like in Halloween time, we'll talk about like more scarier films. Christmas time, we could talk about Christmassy or Christmas time films. You know, films that are like based around December but might not be a Christmas film, like a Die Hard, for example. <laughs> Yeah, no, we can we can come up with uh come up with all kinds of cool ideas. We can absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'm sure there was some other film I was wanted to talk about, and I've, I've completely sidetracked myself. Uh it'll come to me or it won't. No, we'll have to take notes. I mean, I've taken a couple of notes prior to the podcast today just to make sure I don't forget shit. But yeah, it didn't work completely. No, but that's that's okay. You know, I mean, we. We touched on quite a few topics. We touched on quite a few films that we we wanted to talk about. We even segued into Netflix again because, I mean, let's be real. Netflix, they've really, they've really changed the game with streaming films, television shows, anywhere. I mean, you could be on your phone, you could be at your house, you could be on a laptop. You know, you could, you could pick any kind of device, and you will most likely get Netflix on it. And it's just. It's incredible how easily accessible films and television are in this day and age. Whereas, you know, ten years ago, streaming wasn't wasn't even really a thing. I mean, that's just well, I suppose it was a it was like in the early stages, but yeah. you know, you had what like two options back then. Whereas now, you've got every single company has a streaming platform. So the curious thing, though, is about Netflix is that just at the pri- just prior to the millennium, they were being innovative in a different way. At that point, long before the streaming, they were they they were breaking the rules in the in the likes of California and then across the states in in uh, by by providing a new way of renting DVDs. That's how they started out by having wasn't it DVDs delivery? To you. That yeah, was- yeah, delivery to your door kind of thing. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And you could pick, and you could have it as long as you wanted. And then you could get the next, the next rental because you, you pay an annual, you know, a monthly fee, and then you just take, you know, it's, you, can, you can different levels of monthly fee depending on how many you want out at any given time, and you can keep all of it as long as you want, and just stick it back in the envelope when you're done with it, and then the right. next one on your list will come to you. Pretty cool model. I really, I really it enjoyed was, that. It was a very, it was a very good idea. And then um, later on, in I, I don't know exactly when they started, but a company called uh, Redbox. What they did was they would have these machines, yeah. usually outside of like a CVS pharmacy in the States and stuff. And, uh, you know, they'd have, right. they'd have usually like quite popular films at the time, but, you know, the machine could only hold so many films. But you would you would literally go to the machine, you'd be like, oh, okay, you rent it for like a quid a day, like, you know, peanuts, like nothing. And you could hold on to it for, I think it was like up to a week is what they recommended. But usually, usually people would just take it home, they'd watch it, they'd return it to the machine. Only cost them a dollar to watch like a film. I mean, just like, That's just like right. nothing. Absolutely right. But you know, then yeah, obviously, movies. yeah, and then obviously, like, or even Blockbuster, another great example. But you know, obviously, like that—that that was a whole, that was a whole thing to go do. Like, you go to a, but it was usually like you know, you do it for a Friday thing. You get a couple of films for the weekend. You take the family. You, you pick some stuff out. It was like it was like an event. But yeah. I mean, Blockbuster just it once streaming and Redbox and you know once everything else was really coming into its form and convenience became the norm, Blockbuster had no chance. I mean, there, mm. there was just no way they could survive. And it's, it's true. They they didn't. They didn't survive. Which is a shame, because it's like, you know, people have fond memories of Blockbuster, the fact that, you know, like even, even we used to go to Blockbuster, like, I'd say maybe once a week. It yeah. probably wasn't that often, but we, you know, we would go every once no, in a while. We, yeah, we did, we did. And the thing is, well, Blockbuster did try to keep up. They, when Netflix changed that model and, and did the delivery thing model, that Blockbuster actually did adapt, and they did have that same sort of service. Eventually, they got around to that. But by the time they were kind of getting around, catching up with that, Netflix were already looking at the next. Exactly, you know, the it next was, it was too late. It was yeah. too late. God, you, you, you know it's crazy. Like thinking, I mean, I, I hate to keep bringing up Netflix, but I mean they're, they're the best example in the scenario. Thinking about how streaming just kind of started, I don't, I don't even really remember when it started. I think it was, it was definitely sometime when I was still in high school. But I don't know. I, it, it might have started when I was in high school, maybe anywhere from two thousand six, two thousand ten. But, but if it did, I, I don't think we had readily access because it was more on demand stuff, which was through your your television provider back then. That was like like TiVo and stuff. That was the um, 
that was like the wow factor. But I think it might have been a little bit after that is when suddenly yeah. this idea of, you know, oh, or I think back then it was like you could go to Netflix, might have had a website or something, and you could watch stuff there. But it wasn't it wasn't super well known. And then out of the blue, I think maybe like a year or two later after like, I think it was like 2011, 2012, all of a sudden it's like, oh, streaming just comes out of nowhere. This thing of like, oh, you can get an app. You can you can just go to a website. You can you can connect it to your television. You, you could watch it on your laptop. You couldn't watch it on a phone, really, but you could, you know, the, the fact is it was starting and all of a sudden just like everybody knew the name Netflix. Everybody knew uh, of streaming and it just it just exploded. Yeah. And yeah, I still don't remember when I first was like, oh, wow, I, I'm going to get Netflix. I don't remember or I, I don't even remember like my first interaction with Netflix. I, I, I don't remember it. I just remember I've, I've had it for quite a few years now and it's like i don't remember the first time when I, I probably was at like somebody's house and they showed it like you know we we're watching a film on netflix or something and that was it was like whoa this is so cool and then that probably inspired me to do it as well but i don't remember the first time i ever saw netflix no but well, that's a crazy thought but even so that was like it was less than 10 years ago or it might have been about 10 years ago like it it wasn't yeah, a long time ago it was it was about about ten years ago. It was around about that. I know I know I was I resisted it when I was in um, when we had a shop because I didn't want to. I, I found it. I felt it was competing with DVDs. So, so and I was trying to sell DVDs and get people into that. So of course, I'd kind of be cheating. But then of course, when when you uh, you got me into it more and you got you you let me access your account and then from that point on, I didn't really look back. So I got more and more into it, and now we, you know, it's, it's just it's probably the main platform. We yeah, it's it's, it's just from. so convenient. It is so so convenient. You could just boot it up anytime, or even even now. I I think you can do it on. Um, you might be able to do it on PCs and laptops. I'm not 100 percent sure, but on the um on the phone app, you can download films and and shows to watch offline. So you could you know you could be on a commute, maybe not have internet access, and you could still be watching Netflix. And it's like, well, that's yeah. why would you not pay for that? And it you know it costs me like. Well, it used to cost like five quid a month. It's, it's a bit more expensive now, but it's it's still like, it's still less, it's still less than going to see a film in the cinema. I mean, that is nuts. That is nuts. But there's, not, but there's only one thing that I really, really, really don't like about Netflix. And it's something that now happens across other platforms as well. But I blame Netflix for it because I think it started in Netflix. And that is <laughs> the, I really, really hate the navigation, the portal. Hate it. I hate the fact that you can't choose what categories it decides what categories you're going to see. And it oh, gives fair. you funky categories. It gives yeah. you very funky categories that I'm with you not bother to look at. I'm with you and, on that. And, now, and what annoys me about it is that that now everybody's trying to copy off them and they're all doing the same shitty thing. I mean, it's Prime terrible. were the first to kind of really... Amazon Prime were the ones that tried to do things their way and they and they went the same direction. And again, I hate it. But It should be customizable. I play a BBC... BBC iPlayer have gone that direction. So they had a nice, nice <laughs> organized organization system, but now they decided, no, no, we're going to throw that away because we want to be cool. We want to be what Netflix. We want to be a Netflix. We, so we, we, we want to force things thing. down your throat that we think you're going to want to watch, which yeah. we, we know you're not going to watch, but we, we want to push what we think will make us more money. That's that's what it is at the end of the day. They're, yeah. they're just pushing their agendas to make more money, which is yeah, it's business. That's fair. I understand that. But if they want to continue having good business, just just have it be customizable. That's that's all it takes. Absolutely. I mean, you've you've got the list. That's good. You can always access the list. I think that's good. You've got the continue watching. I think that's a great idea. And uh, they they also introduce the whole like, oh, you can skip intro. You can skip recaps. I think that's good. That that's that's really useful yeah. stuff. Or you know, it knows when the credit starts. So you can press the next episode button. That's good. They've got all these good ideas. But then, like you said, with the portal, the the navigation. You're right. That is. That is rubbish because uh, I think for me one of my most hated things is usually like, I'll, I'll, I'll rewatch. Um, I think probably like one show I rewatch a thousand times and I'll never get sick of it is is it's always Sunny in Philadelphia. I love it on Netflix, but um, I, I always have to go to my continue watching, which is fine. I have no problem with that. But sometimes it's like the second line down. Sometimes it's the eighth line down, and th there's no yeah. consistency and it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Totally random, totally random. But I've just thought of somebody else. YouTube, of course. YouTube probably started it rather than Netflix because that, that's yeah. exactly what they do. The that, same. They thing. definitely do that. Really, they really definitely do that. 
but with but with YouTube, they have um because obviously that's more like a homepage kind of thing. But they have the uh, you can just filter by your subscriptions, which is how I tend to do my YouTube stuff. Because being a YouTuber myself, I I do like to watch other YouTubers, whether it be the same kind of content or you know I watch other kind of content depending on my interests and stuff. But you know at least yeah. and, and that's where I tend to filter to most times is just based on my subscription because then I know I'm getting only the stuff I want to see. Granted, I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's in chronological order. That's That makes sense as well. And, you know, oh, maybe I'm only looking for certain ones. You know, so sometimes I have to do a little bit of extra filtering, which is fair. But you're right. When it comes to, like, the homepage or, or, or God, even if you click, like, trending, which is just the, the worst idea, just don't do that. I mean, you're just going to see just the hottest garbage. And it's it's not going to be what you're looking for. But, you know, on the homepage, you're right. It's, it's just a big old mess of you might see one or two things of, oh, you were watching this. Do you want to keep watching that? I hate when it brings up uh, YouTube do this the most. Netflix don't, like other websites don't, but YouTube is always like, oh, uh, you you didn't finish these last three seconds of this video. Do you want to keep watching that? It's like, no, it's three fucking seconds. Do you do you think I was going to finish those? No. If, I, if, if I'm in the last like five minutes of a, of a thing and I, I've left it, I'm probably done with it. You know, like it might be exit credits, it might be advertising. I, I don't need to see the last five minutes of a thing. You can just say I've watched it and you can just move past it. But they don't. They, they keep it up there and they, they show you the red bar and it shows us at the fucking end. And you're like, look, you, you know I'm done with it. Why do you still have it? Just, just don't. Exactly. Exactly right. It's true. They, exactly. they are, I mean, the, these companies, it's not like they don't have the money to improve these things. It's, I'm sure they've had these ideas. They probably have board meetings. They have discussions. They probably have, you know, people that come up with ideas all the fucking time. I'm absolutely sure. And yeah, I get the feeling maybe one person pipes up and goes, oh, well, maybe we should let them customize stuff themselves. They'll probably like that. It's like, you're right. They will like that, but we're not going to fucking do it. I guess what? I found the, um, sorry to massively change the subject. I just stumbled, <laughs> purely stumbled after after browsing through in that ridiculous fashion it makes you browse through every kind of random piece of shit. Yeah. I actually found this um this this documentary which I think you will enjoy, the one that's a little bit like Wild West Country, except even more sinister, and it's and it's called a sinister sect, Colonia Ooh. Dignidad. Sinister a sinister sect. sect. A sinister sect, Colonia Dignidad. And it's a series, it's a docuseries. Mm. And it is yes, it is very good. Very good. Strongly recommend it. That sounds great. I'll, I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely look for that. That's it. That's it. Anything else we need to cover? Um, we, oh, we have only some uh, set features or something like that that we're going to have every week. Maybe we we, we, we did we did talk about that the first week and uh, we didn't make any notes about that. So I've I've only got yeah, notes of. It. I've I've only got the notes on our ideas of feedback, and that's obviously uh, the name we were going to pick for the podcast, <laughs> which which it took and us a little bit, but we we got it down, we got it down, and we picked a good one, and I'm quite pleased. Absolutely, absolutely. That's good. Now we've well, already got think... these good stopping point. No, no, it's just, it's good. I th I think I was just spouting on about about how we got two episodes on our belt. Yeah, absolutely. Very good, very good, and yeah. it's, uh, it's interesting to talk about. I'm definitely interested in it. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm, I'm having a good time with this. We're having we're having good fun, and once we start rolling, I mean, we just we just really start going. Absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. And there's just endless stuff to talk about. I'm telling you, I'm looking at I'm looking at a spreadsheet right now, and I've got there's thousands of films, and I could tell you we could we could get in talking about any one of them at any point in time. This is something. Oh, this is a topic we could talk about. For, for forever, except <laughs> just you know, it's one the fact that I was getting tired. I would, I'd be, I could speak about this for hours if I had energy. Perhaps I should do it next week at, uh, earlier in the day, yeah. on the weekend, and I'll uh, get okay. more energy for it. I'm, I'm happy to do that. We can, um, yeah, we, we definitely should incorporate yeah. your um, your list. Probably even in every episode, we should have like a segment just for that, so that way we can just do our little tangents and stuff. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can take, you know, we can take a, any, I was going to say something like, you know, 10 years ago today, or 10 years ago this month, these are the films oh, that came out. Or five I, like, years I ago, like that. Or, I like that. Bringing relevant to the day in a different year. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and then, of course, in this spreadsheet, I've got my, I, I try to have my all-time favourite films. I've got my top thousand favourite films in here. And it's, and it's still, it's always going to be out of date because I, as I watch each new film and I try to remember, I'll, I'll make a note of it in this spreadsheet that I've watched that film. And I'll put it on the list, getting ready to rank it somewhere in the thousand. And I, that, that's how crazy, completely crazy and geeky I am about it that I won't actually try to fit in every film I watch into a rank it in a in a in a, in a listing of a thousand all time favourite films and of course I've watched that's thousands tough. more. That's really but, tough um, to do. Oh, it's tough. Yeah. Out of a thousand, it is, it is that's a, tough. It's it's a crazy challenge. But I, I can tell you the higher it gets, so certainly the um call it my Hall of Fame. Certainly the top fifty, I mean or even the top hundred I would say deserve to be there. I, I've, I've watched films since I put these lists together. I probably haven't put much in this in these lists. I haven't updated them very much in a little bit over the, over the course of the last couple of years. But uh, but I can look at this list now, and let's say I'll take yeah, I'll take you to uh, and there's something we, we can think of a feature later where you might want to do something and compare notes on what your favourites are and my favourites all time favourites. But and we've talked about it earlier today. So I'm looking at number ninety eight um, in my top one hundred. Is a film which arguably, and some people could make a, a solid argument for being the best film of all time, and that is Casablanca. We talked about earlier on. I mean, I, I can I could understand why somebody would say Casablanca is the best film of all time. I, it's there's definitely merits to that argument. I don't know why I've got it down at ninety eight. In fact, I'm sure it, it deserves to be a lot higher than that. But back in the early days, when I, I'm, I've now watched it probably about a dozen or more times. Each time I watch it, I like it even more. So it's one of those films which you just find, you know special better things about it each time you watch it but so i can tell you right there what is my 19th favorite film it's casablanca <laughs> can you tell me what your number 98 favorite film is and i've lost you <laughs> well, that there was a good ramble there. Well, I lost you. <laughs> well, I can tell you what is my all-time, all-time top hundred films, and and that is number ninety-eight is Casablanca, and uh, it's bizarre. It is bizarre. Because uh, another film which which most critics would argue is the greatest film of all time, I rate I've got it rated here as my number ninety seven film, and that is now uh, that that should be a puzzle. I'm going to leave that as a puzzle for the listeners. If for, if we've got two or three listeners out there, a film which most critics would would argue is the best film, the greatest film of all time, uh, and I'll, a bigger clue is it's it's a film that was made in the nineteen forties, so. I'm not talking here about a film which is listed in many sites as the greatest film of all time, which is um, uh, Shawshank Redemption. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a film that long before that was was widely considered by critics as the best film of all time. Um, put your put your answers on a postcard because we're using old fashioned technology like that, and let us know if you're listening. If there's anybody out there listening, and I'll tell you next week. You know, I'll tell you in episode three. Um, of our podcast, what that film is. It's number ninety-seven in my in my list of, of the top hundred films of all time. Or, or, or you can guess on Spotify. So you can you can guess and let us know in the comments if you're listening out there what that film is. And we'll poll it and we'll decide. You know who's got the best answer. But I'll tell you. I mean, it, it is basically I'm asking you to guess what is my number ninety-seven of all time. But I'm giving the big clue that. Is widely considered to be the best film of all time. Um, but it's 97 for me. I love the film. It's 97 for me just because it, this is a list. It's not of the best films of all time, but the films I've most enjoyed in all time. And, and the more I think about it and look at some of the ones that are above it in my listing, the more I think, oh, it deserves to be higher than that. But realistically, it should be. It should always be in the top 10 of all time, at the very least. But anyway, what film am I talking about? That's it. There'll be more clues. If nobody gives me any comments by the next episode, of our podcast, I will be um, I'll be giving more clues next time. If we get no comments at all, if we get nothing at all, I'll give more clues. 
But if we get some clues, I'll uh, we'll have a little poll and see. Okay. Right. I'm, it looks like I'm going solo now. <laughs> I've lost the lad. He's dead without the lad. <laughs> So, <laughs> how's the weather where you are, listeners? <laughs> what films do you like, and what films would you put in the top ten of all time? Because we'll be talking about that next week. We'll, uh, we'll, I think we'll take a look at what are our favourite films of all time. Um, I, again, you know, I've got my, I can go through the whole thousand, but I won't. I, I'll just, we'll just talk about the top ten, twenty, whatever, and we'll compare notes between myself and Nathan, and that'll be a feature of next next week's podcast. But for this week, I think we are just dwindling to a, to a finish. I'm just trying to scrape the battle for things to say while I uh, my accomplice rejoins me. And uh, then we can uh, wrap this up for another week. And I look forward to seeing that. I don't think I've seen a link for last week. Yeah. Listen to that because I need things to listen to to help me go to sleep at night. Oh, that's okay. I will um, I'll get that to us. Probably this Friday, because I think that's the day we want the podcast to go out. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So that'll be number one this Friday. That's right. Okay, cool. That sounds good to me. Yeah, and then every rolling Friday. Um, I haven't really picked a time, but I'll probably pick like five o'clock. I don't know, it could, could be earlier. It's that way in case people want to download it, in case they're having a commute and stuff. It gives them a bit of time. To prepare, which ain't a bad idea. You 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 going real choppy now? Am I? Yep. Well, well, the the good thing about this coming Friday is, apart from it being the first podcast, it's also my first payday on the current mm. work project. I'm on. So that's going to be uh, two things to look forward to. <laughs> nice. That's that's perfect then. All right. Well, we'll definitely do it on the Friday then, and every Friday following. That's what we'll. Uh, that's what we'll do. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, got it all well, set. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think you're right. I think we should wrap up. You uh, you did very well. Thank you for covering. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe, maybe one day. Maybe one day we'll tell them. <laughs> maybe, 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 they, maybe, maybe they got to pay for that, but you know, we'll, we'll, we might, we might, we might give them the content. That'll be, on, <laughs> yeah, that'll be the paid content. <laughs> what, what, was it, what was it covered up for? Well, that, that'll be the paid content. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, this has been great fun. We've covered quite a lot this week, and I think you've said uh, next week we're going to cover our uh, our top tens. That sounds like a uh, mm -hmm. solid idea. I'm going to have to uh, give that yeah. a lot of thought. Jesus, to pick yeah, my top got, ten. That yeah. can, that's what we, did, what, what we did last week, is we gave each other a, a film to watch for the week. I remember that was one of the challenges we gave each other. But we can do this instead. Because that, not a challenge for me, because I've already got my top ten. But maybe <laughs> making sure it's up to date. But, yeah, uh, fair, but a fair. challenge for you to think about. So we can compare notes. Oh, absolutely. I'll, I'll have to give it quite a bit of thought. But, uh, yeah, I'll do that. No problem. And we'll... Uh, We'll launch that for the next episode. That sounds great. Otherwise, uh, is there anything else you want to say? No, other than uh, have a good week, everybody. If you're listening to this, uh, two or three of you that are out there listening to this, that, that's. I hope you're having a fantastic week. And uh, this is just going to keep on getting better as we feel there's more and more entertaining stuff. From it is definitely going to get better. Program. We're going to get better at our techniques and our methods. You know, it, it'll get better. Just stick with us Absolutely. and, uh, you know. But we're more than welcome to have uh, suggestions if there's anything you want us to talk about. Just uh, just let us know. We're, we're, who knows? We might have even seen it. We might, we'll might. we be more than happy to talk about anything film or television related. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, 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 put a, okay. we'll put a poll out about the um, about the film you wanted to guess. That's a good idea. That's right. Number 97 in my list, of course, you're not going to, that's not going to give you any kind of a clue. But <laughs> most, most critics consider, most critics consider it to be the best film of all time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's some pretty solid guessing there. So uh, let's, we'll, we'll see what people think. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for, uh, for being here with us. And uh, we hope you enjoy your weekend. And we'll see you next Friday for the next episode. Until then, you yeah, take care. You. Dad, take thank care. you very much. It's been good chatting with you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for and your time. 
and stay frosty out there. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. Bye, everybody.